electric ROVs are underwater vehicles that get power and control signals remotely via an umbilical and the propulsion systems are powered by electricity. When I finished writing this, I realised it would go on for a bit too long, so I've t- t- cut it into two parts. The next one follows in a couple of days, and I apologise on, on the audio track, got a bit of hay fever. What the- Electric ROVs are commonly used in the oil and gas, nuclear and hydroelectric power industries and water management and aquaculture, salvage, and military, law enforcement and scientific research and broadcast industry. Anyway, historically there was friction with the diving industry when the first electric ROVs were being used for inspection. Today they're far more commonly accepted and sometimes even seen as providing useful assistance particularly in applications with strong currents, restricted views or polluted waters. Electric ROVs are ideally suited for inspection, some a little more than camera carrying platforms, small enough to enter confined spaces where a human human would find trouble gaining access. But it's the ability to integrate equipment into the vehicle, permanently or ad hoc, that makes a modern electric ROV so versatile. So, incorporating pipe trackers into electric ROVs, for example, allows them to use to detect buried pipes and cables. Alternatively, vehicles can carry tools to investigate areas of structural failure in tubulars, or press probes against metallic surfaces to verify cathodic protection, or particularly in deep water, uh, where dives are restricted. Armed with water jetting lances or rotary brushes, they can be used to clean surfaces. They've been used to carry talk tools for remote intervention, fish scoops for aquaculture, and even sharks for cinematography. Military applications include mine countermeasures. These are critical to the Navy. They can be used for harbour security. The police can use them for body recovery. So let's look more closely at a typical ROV. Actually, there are no such things as a typical electric ROV, but let's give it our best shot. So there tend to be two different types of electric ROV. One is a self-contained vehicle. In this, the component parts and peripherals such as the sonar, video, lighting, are pre-selected and often incorporated into the streamlined hull body. It works straight out of the box. There are many different designs and shapes. The majority are relatively small, which can be a bonus when used for inspection. Some can be larger, with a greater power capacity. Many vehicles of this type are built for forward speed. They have hydrodynamic hull form designs and may have multiple rear thrusters. They tend to be very powerful, able to carry external payloads, sometimes as big as the vehicles themselves. They can sometimes retrofit grabs and perform intervention work. For more power, one ROV has ports in which to retrofit additional vertical thrusters as required, or sometimes they're built in as standard. Even the smallest vehicles can be powerful. This one is essentially a box with inset thrusters, lights and camera. It's highly manoeuvrable and there's a larger version of exactly the same shape. This one is a vertical quasi discoidal hull form. It features an internal HD camera with a 330 degree field of view to inspect below, above, behind, in front. The other type, which accounts for most of the market, are called open frame designs, onto which third party equipment such as lights, cameras, sonar, sensors can be bolted. Their keynote is that they're inherently customizable. They can be small, but the largest largest ones can be similar in size to a large hydraulic ROV. The designs are typically based on a polycarbonate aluminium frame with a buoyancy member bolted to the roof. The umbilical or tether lead comes down through the top or sometimes the back and routed to the subsea pod. And this houses the control electronics, keeping the delicate cards at atmospheric pressure. Power and signal cables penetrate through the pod's wall and are routed directly to the lights, imaging equipment and always the thrusters. And that's basically it. There's nothing unsophisticated about the control electronics, but they all have the basic structure. Control pod, thrusters, payload, that's the lighting, camera, manipulators, that sort of thing. So, those are the thrusters, that's a control pod, and that's a payload. Those are the thrusters, that's a control pod, and the grabber and the lighting and sonar are the payload. 
Um, those are the thrusters. You can't really see the control pod properly. Yeah, that's better. But in that sphere. And the payload is on the front. Get the picture? In the next video, we're going to look at electric ROVs in greater detail. But if you want to know more about subsea engineering, read UT2 or UT3, the magazine, an online magazine of the Society for Underwater Technology. And if you're looking at this on YouTube, please click the little bell icon at the top right hand corner and that'll tell you when we're going to publish our next video.